I realised early on that my life was going to be a little different. It's not that I'm particularly special. It's all about how you see things. When I was five years old, I was diagnosed with macular dystrophy. We put your fists up in front of your eyes to block out all of your central vision and then imagine that 95% of the clarity is blurred out from your peripheral vision. That's how I see. When I was first diagnosed, obviously as a young kid, I didn't really know that I'd been diagnosed. It was sort of my parents, credits to who they are, sheltered me from that whole process. But in the background, they were having meetings with the, my school principal and, um, and all the experts telling them that I had to go to a, a school for kids with disabilities. And they went and checked out the school for, for kids with disabilities and the children were walking around with like their heads down and shallow gait. The contrast to the school that I was at, where everyone was just running around having fun and it was a lot more social and, the, and the, the learning level was a lot higher, they just basically made that decision, well, it's going to be hard for, for the school and it's going to be hard for them as parents and it's probably going to be even harder for me as a, a child with a disability. But they thought it was going to be a better outcome at the end of that process, so they decided to, to keep me in the, um, in the mainstream school. So my dad's very much an individual. He was more like, okay, well, what are the risks? and what's the potential gain, and he was happy to take the risks because he thought the gain was the, the, the potential gain was something that was really aspirational for me as a person and, and us as a family. They were always looked at as the people that weren't looking after their child with a disability because they were putting me in harm's way, but in reality they were actually giving me more opportunities. For me, I really feel like it's given me the foundation to be where I am in business and where I've, where I've achieved in sport. For me, risk management is a part of day-to-day -day life and that's just getting to, to work in the morning. There are a lot of more risks that I have to take because I have a disability than someone without a disability would, would understand. But that's given me the ability um, to be able to achieve what I've achieved in, in cycling, becoming a world champion and world record holder. Cycling for me was a bit of a, I just fell into it. A mate of mine said, I'm going to ride to Melbourne. Um, and I said, okay, cool. And I didn't really have much on at the time. So I was like, cool, I'll come with you. So we did the ride together. And through that, I got um, noticed by Cycling Australia and sort of said, I want to become a world champion. I'd like to become a Paralympian. And um, they're big targets, but uh, I, I knew that I would be able to do it. I had, I had, the, um, had the belief and the, you know, confidence in myself that, that I could do it. They sort of looked at me and said, yeah, you're a strong guy and you're good at riding, but you need to, there's a lot of, you need to make some physical changes and it's going to take a lot of work. And that was in 2010. By 2011, I won two bronze medals at national championships. I represented Australia at world championships in, in Denmark. By racing against the best guys in the world, I, I knew what the level was I needed to get to. So I trained really hard and raced really hard through, through 2012. Um, and then by 2013, I went to the World Cup in, in Canada and, and won that, won a gold medal there. In 2014, I went to the Track World Championships in Mexico and won World Championships and became a world, world record holder at the same meet. So I set the world record for the four kilometre pursuit. Went to the, the Paralympics in Rio last year and that was the, that was the end of the journey for me. And, I, and I've sort of stepped back from cycling now and I'm going back to my, my first love, which is surfing. surfing big waves. People say, how do you do that? That's crazy. But like, I mean, I can't see the bottom of a small wave. So a big wave is just a bit faster. So people say, why do you want to go and jump out of aeroplanes or go diving with big sharks, dive out in the middle of the ocean? It's my choice. I, I choose to take those risks and be involved in those things because it, it makes me happy. It gives me joy and it gives me exposure to do things in life rather than sitting in a room. I knew that I'd I'd done my, finished my journey with cycling and really wanted to get back into surfing. So I called Surfing Australia to say I'd, I'd love to get on the Australian team. And they sort of said, well, we've got a competition next weekend, which is, which is sort of mid-October. Um, if you come up for that we, we, and, you, and you go all right, we'll, uh, we'll take you to World Championships in California in, in December. Two months after I, um, I got back in the water for surfing, which I hadn't done for a few years, um, I won a bronze medal at, at the World Championships in California.
I just paddle towards the waves um, to get out the back. And if I keep paddling towards the waves, I'll eventually get out the back. Um, or if things are going bad, I need to get out of the water, I just point my board to where the waves are going and that'll eventually take me back to the shore. It's pretty basic thinking, but a lot of people don't think that way. Um, and that's the way I've always thought in business as well, and just try and bring things right back to basics, rather than just saying, oh, that's too scary, or oh, there's too much risk involved. If you really look at it, there's not a lot of risk in a lot of things in life. I'm now working in this amazing job where I'm heading up corporate social responsibility for Optus Business, which is all about how we as an organisation give back to the community and, and support amazing charities like Orange Sky Laundry and World Vision and the, the Smith family. Although I've got this great list of achievements and things that I've done, there's no way that I could have done any of them without the massive support network that I have. Obviously growing up, that support network was very much my family, my parents, my brother and my sister. These days it's very much my wife. I've got two little kids and I'm away quite a lot, so she's at home. She probably deserves the, my list of achievements as much as I do, because a lot of the stuff I've done is while we've been together. Also, I've got all my corporate sponsors. Optus, who's my employer, but is my major sponsor, are just unrelenting in their support and it just humbles me to think how they look after me and how they support me. Um, and then I've got other sponsors as well, like Billabong and, and Firewire Surfboards, who give me equipment and look after me. Any sport, when you're doing it at an elite level, you need a lot of equipment. And to go out and buy all that equipment, it's just, it would cost a fortune. So to have the support from those sorts of organisations and to know that global companies of that level are supporting me, a, a disabled athlete, it, it's very humbling and it, it makes me be able to go out and do what I do without putting a lot of financial impact on my family. As part of my business outside of my corporate role, I do executive coaching. And coaching is helping other people, so asking questions and helping other people come up with the solution themselves. We've all got these ideas about what our barriers are and what our hurdles are. But a lot of the times when you start unwrapping that, those barriers and hurdles aren't actually there. We're just putting them in front of ourselves as a bit of a security blanket to say, that's why I can't do something. So when you unwrap that and you remove that security blanket, all of a sudden people have to, to try. I get them to focus on what's the best pathway for them, forget about all obstacles and just go as direct route to the path to, to their goal as possible. And that's what I try and pass on to people. So if you can give them a clear pathway and give them that first step, they're off and running and, and I can just see how much, how much weight it takes off their shoulders and I can just feel the energy of that person that they, they've got this clear pathway of how they can get somewhere that they never thought they were gonna get before. When I walk away from an experience like that and someone has completely changed their behavior and their attitude towards something, I couldn't, ex couldn't even explain to you how happy it makes me. Because I know that once someone is able to expand themselves and be able to achieve things that they thought they'd never achieve, they will then pass that on to someone else. So that goodness is then pushed further out into the community. In all aspects of my life, I just feel so happy at the moment because I'm able to just continually give back. I've had this amazing life where people have supported me and given me the, the foundation to be able to achieve a lot of the things that I've achieved. And now I've sort of get to feed that back into the community. It just makes my heart expand. I just feel so, so much joy. Yeah, it's just an amazing feeling.